Welcome back. In this lecture 16, I will discuss about different process conditions for synthesizing polymers and also talk about emulsion polymerization in little detail. So, these are the topics I plan to cover in this lecture. We have learned how to synthesize uh, polymers by radical chain polymerization. Now, in this lecture, I will explain you different polymerization processes. Now, that is not restricted only to radical chain polymerization. Any polymerization processes can be carried out by the processes I am going to discuss in this lecture. There could be two possibilities, one is homogeneous, second one is either heterogeneous or multiphase. Now, some homogeneous systems can become heterogeneous as the polymerization proceeds because the resulting polymer may be not soluble in the reaction medium. As a result, the polymer might get precipitate and the solution might get heterogeneous from homogeneous. But usually we basically classify the polymerization process looking after the initial behavior or initial phase of the reaction mixture. Now, in homogeneous we can have melt polymerization or solution polymerization. We can in multiphase we can have emulsion polymerization, suspension bead or bead or pulp polymerization and heterogeneous we can have this precipitation polymerization or polymerization with heterogeneous catalysis, interfacial polymerization and solid state polymerization. In male polymerization, the name suggests that the reaction is carried out in molten stage where monomers as well the result as well as the resulting polymers are in male state that is the resulting polymers are above their Tg glass transition temperature or melting point so that the polymer chains behave like a melt. And for example, some polyethylene tetraethylate or polybutylene tetraethylate polycarbonate are some examples. Solution polymerization in solution polymerization the monomer and the resulting polymers are soluble in the solvent and example is solution polyethylene. Similarly, for multiphase polymerization we can have suspension polymerization which is also called pearl and bead polymerization because the resulting polymer products they come as a bead, spherical beads looks like pearls. So, that is why sometimes this term pearl or bead polymerization is used for this suspension polymerization. Now, it can be employed with any water insoluble monomer and initiator. So, both the monomer and the initiator are not soluble in the water, but initiator is soluble in the monomer. So, the monomer and the initiator actually are suspended in the water phase by using a suspending agent and also by vigorous stirring. And these suspending agents could be basically surfactants or some water soluble polymers or some inorganic clays. And the polymerization happens within the drop, this monomer droplets. Some of the examples like crystal polystyrene, foamable polystyrene, ion exchange resin which contains spherical crossing beads and so on. Precipitation polymerization where the monomers are in solution but the resulting polymers precipitated out of soluble a solution like acrylic fiber like polyacrylonitrile. Now, in multiphase polymerization polymerization with uh, heterogeneous catalysis where polymerization happens where a catalyst which is insoluble either in the monomer or in the solvent used in the polymerization. So, the catalyst remain as a separate phase altogether. So, that is why we call this a heterogeneous polymerization or multiphase polymerization. And we will discuss this in um, next uh, two, three lectures, after two, three lectures we will talk about this uh, synthesis of polyethylene or polypropylene by the multiphase polymerization reaction. We will talk about more detail 
about emulsion polymerization in after some time. In emulsion polymerization essentially is carried out in water medium having three components monomer, initiator, surfactant and I will discuss uh, this in detail in, in after a few, few minutes. Interfacial polymerization, this polymerization is utilized for synthesizing step growth polymerization at lower temperature. Remember we discussed step growth polymerization and usually step growth polymers are synthesized at higher temperature because the rate of reactions are generally very high and we need very high conversion to achieve a meaningful molecular weight for step growth polymers. But to avoid high temperature during polymerization, it can be done using interfacial polymerization where polymerization of the, of the two reactants is carried out at the interface between two liquid phases. So basically in case of say for example polycarbonate we have an aqueous phase and a methylene chloride or organic phase and basically in the interface the reaction happened and because we start the reaction at a very high speed. So basically there are continuous generation of large, large surface area interface area. So that is the reason reaction become much faster for example, bisphenol A polycarbonate. Solid state polymerization where process uh, within which the chain growth reaction occurs predominantly in the solid state and the amorphous region of the polymer and the reactive end groups are concentrated in the amorphous region and are excluded from the crystallite. So basically there is a chain growth happening and the, the other side of the chain where the active chain in not present that belong to crystallites and the chain in actually becomes part of the amorphous region. Hence the reaction happen in the amorphous region and uh, this is how solid state polymerization happen and some examples are bottle grade polyethylene terephthalate high molecular weight polybutylene terephthalate high molecular weight polyamides and so on. We are, we are discussing about general processes. Now I will talk about the common processes which are used for free radical polymerization and these are similar to what I discussed in last 5 minutes. So basically when only monomer no solvents present bulk polymerization so initial initiator also gets soluble in the monomer. In a solvent we call solution polymerization when the monomers are dispersed in aqueous phase we have suspension polymerization and the produced polymers are dispersed in organic solvent we have dispersion polymerization and in emulsion we will have emulsion polymerization. I will just discuss each of these uh, the benefits and or advantages and disadvantages of these uh, four processes briefly and then go in detail slightly detail about the emulsion polymerization because this is the one of the most important industrial process of making polymers by free radical polymerization. So we we'll go to bulk polymerization as the name suggests bulk means there is no other thing present other than the monomer and the initiator. So this is the simplest uh, method so only monomer and monomer soluble initiator is present. So basically you have the reaction mixture where you have taken the monomer and monomer soluble initiator and the produced polymers are also soluble in the monomers. And the free radical kinetics which basically we, we basically learned in the last few classes, uh, classes or lectures they actually apply in this polymerization method. The advantage is that the monomer concentration is very high and we have learned from our kinetic equations that as the monomer concentration increases we get high reaction rate as well as high molecular weight. So in this case rate of polymerization is high as well as the molecular weight produced and because there is no other, no other ingredient other than uh, monomer and initiator the produced polymer polymers are high of high priority minimum contamination of products. So this can be used as a optical grid where basically uh, where the applications are deals with light uh, 
so that though where the presence of very even very small amount of impurity is also very detrimental. Now, as the monomer concentration is very high in this case, there will be obviously some dissociation uh, disadvantage associated with this process, and the disadvantages are that viscosity becomes high even at low concentration because we do not have any solvent the monomers are present. So, viscosity becomes very high and starting becomes difficult and as a result processing also become difficult. High reaction rate as a result we know the reaction polymerization reaction are exothermic in nature as a result heat generation happens at higher rate and unless we have our it's very nice or very effective way of removing the generated heat from the reaction mixture. This will basically the heat generation will accumulate and it will generate high temperature locally and we get those complication like gel effect or Thomson effect as we discussed in the last lecture. And as the viscosity goes up, um, the diffusion, the polymerization becomes diffusion control as we discussed in the last class that the, the long chain propagating radicals cannot diffuse at a high rate to come close to each other and terminate the chain. So, basically as a result the termination becomes lower and we get gel effect. And as the temperature increases, locally degradation may happen and as a result coloration rather than discoloration may happen and branching cross, -links, cross linking may also happen as we discussed in the last lecture. And as a result the dispersity or the polydispersity and x value also goes up in these cases. So, in practically what is done in, in, in the industrial processes where the conversion is kept at a low value and the polymer products are taken out of the reaction mixture and then the reaction process res gets restarted. So, basically we take out the po pro produced polymer in, in batches from the reaction so that we do not go to that conversion level where the viscosity becomes high and there is a gel effect associated with that. These are this process is used for styrene, methacrylate, vinyl chloride etcetera. Now, solution polymerization in this case monomer solvent and soluble initiator solvent soluble in true sense. So, basically we dissolve the monomer and the initiator in the solvent and free radical kinetics apply and the produced polymers are also soluble in solvent. And because we are doing the reaction in the solvent there are advantages like the viscosity build up we talked about for bulk polymerization does not happen happen here. So, solvent act as a diluent and also act as a basically help in removal of the heat of polymerization and solvent reduces the viscosity making stirring easier and thermal control is easier than bulk as I discussed now. But the disadvantage is because we are using solvent and solvent comes uh, with itself uh, several disadvantage. Uh, like uh, it is most cases it is uh, if this is organic solvent there is a problem of environmental problem hazard problem you have to recycle the solvent and basically reuse the solvent preferably cost involved. But because the concentration of monomer is low as compared to bulk then the rate of polymerization and molecular weight is lower as we know from our kinetics of radical chain polymerization. And one important thing that chain transfer to the solvent may happen and as a result the molecular weight may come down. And sometimes it is difficult to remove the solvent from final polymer product and which basically causes further degradation of the bulk properties. Because if you have uh, not pure polymer we have solvent traps then it it's basically gives a, a degradation the property uh, bulk property of the resulting material. And of course, as I discussed that you need to uh, recycle the solvent and recover the solvent as much as possible. And because we are using solvent, especially if you are using organic solvent, then environmental pollution due to the solvent release happen. And these are used for some low molecular ethylene, acryl nitrile and vinyl acetate etcetera. 
we come to the heterogeneous polymerization, suspension polymerization, in this case monomer and monomer soluble initiator water and this person. So, basically this is like a bulk polymer, but we are instead of having the entire reaction um, container as a bulk, we are going to do the reaction in small droplets basically, so that there are numerous reactors, reactors or the reaction uh, containers which are dispersed through in, in aqueous medium. So, the kinetics would be similar as bulk polymer and initially the initiator is dissolved in the monomer and then they are added to a preheated dispersing medium which is water medium and vigorous stirring actually convert this monomer containing initiator, monomer plus initiator into small droplets size about microns 100 to 500 microns. And there are dispersant like surfactant or um, water soluble polymer or some inorganic compounds which basically stabilize this suspension and this is aided by vigorous stirring. And once we heat the reaction along in presence of a thermal initiator for example, then the polymerization start and the polymerization happen in those droplets and as a result the advantages of the bulk polymer actually uh, exist in this case the monomer concentration is high and, and other thing. But and also an, an another advantage that because we are doing in a aqueous medium the heat generation can be removed quite effectively. So, these are the advantage we said that aqueous medium act as a diluent and aids in removal of heat of polymerization, high polymerization rate and high molecular weight and the polymer produced as a bead so taken out by filtration easily. Disadvantage that polymerization need to be completed otherwise the beads which we have if we have a residual monomer then it is a problematic and uh, because they will not be useful. So, we need the reaction need to be completed and dispersion may impart the, the additional dispersion we are using for suspending those particles in the aqueous medium there if we do cannot remove them effectively then that will impart impurities in the product. These are used for methacrylate and other acrylate esters, vinyl acetate, vinyl chloride, difluoroethylene, etc., tetrafluoroethylene, etc. There is another heterogeneous polymerization possible where basically the resulting polymers are now not soluble in the say aqueous medium. So, basically they get precipitated and they actually act as a nucleation sites for further monomers. So, basically instead of monomer uh, polymer. Uh, Ha polymerization happening on the droplets in case of suspension polymerization, here polymerization will happen on the particle produced by the precipitated polymers. So, monomer and soluble initiator organic solvent in this case rather than in case of suspension polymerization we have aqueous solvents in this case generally we have organic solvents and we have dispersion present which basically disperse the produced polymer particles polymers are formed are insoluble in solvent, polymers remain dispersed because presence of dispersion and polymer grow in size by absorption of monomers on the polymer particles which gets polymerized further and we get large uh, polymer size in this case. There are other heterogeneous polymerization processes uh, possible like inverse suspension polymerization, micro suspension polymerization and emulsion polymerization which we will discuss in this lecture it is now itself in detail. So, let us talk about uh, emulsion polymerization and this is important because uh, it has a great industrial importance. In fact, emulsion polymerization was the first was first employed during World War II for producing synthetic rubbers from 1,3-butadiene and styrene and this was the start of synthetic rubber industry in United States, states in those days. And it presently it is a predominant process for commercial productions of vinyl acetate, chloropene, various acrylate copolymers, copolymers and copolymerization of butadiene and styrene and acrylonitrile. It is also used for methacrylate vinyl chloride, acrylamide and some fluorinated ethylenes. 
Now, the most important is that the polymer product which we get from emulsion polymerization are actually colloidally, colloidally stable dispersion particulate polymer in water known as latex. So, basically in this case the product comes as a colloidally stable means the we get particulate polymers which are stable by adsorption of surfactant or emulsifier molecules and that product it's, is, a, is a reaction mixture itself when we call this as a latex and it can be used directly for applications like paints, coatings, finishes, floor polishes. Of course, we need to add other ingredients like uh, pigments and um, stabilizers uh, and so on. And the size of the particles in this case are much lower than the suspension polymerization or dispersion polymerization. Here we are talking about maximum 1 micron which is even it could go even much lower than as low as 0 0.05 micron. It is about 3 orders of magnitude smaller than the polymer beads which we got from or which we get from suspension polymerization. And because we are doing the reaction in a suspended medium, the heat issue, the heat release and removal, those things are taken care because this has been the reaction is carried out in aqueous medium. And mechanism and kinetics are different in this case than normal radical chain polymerization kinetics which we discussed in couple of lectures back. So, the mechanism and the kinetics are little different which we will discuss uh, briefly in coming um, slides. One of the most important aspect uh, in terms of kinetics is that molecular weight of the polymers produced can be increased without compromising the polymerization rate. Remember in rad rad normal radical chain polymerization if we increase the temperature or if we increase the initiator quantity we get a higher reaction rate, but uh, as a compromise we actually decrease the molecular weight what we achieve. But in this case that disadvantage can be overcome by this emulsion processes where molecular weight and the reaction rate both can be increased simultaneously. In a typical medium reaction mixture of emulsion polymerization we have these ingredients. Of course, we have a dispersing medium which is water and we have water insoluble monomer or the solubility may be slightly, there should be always very slight solubility of the monomer in water and typically the ratio of water and monomer is about 7, 7 is to 3 to 6 is to 4 by weight. So, water is present in majority in a emulsion polymerization. Initiator in case of bulk polymerization or suspension polymerization, remember we talked about the initiator is oil solubility or soluble in the monomer phase. But in this case we are talking about initiator is water soluble and insoluble in the organic monomer. So, basically we are talking about what oil insoluble initiator in this case. So, monomer is water insoluble and initiator is water soluble or oil insoluble. And we need emulsifiers which are nothing but surfactants, we basically help in dispersing the monomer droplets and the polymer particles which are gets which basically gets produced during this emulsion polymerization. And emulsifiers are surfactants which are used high concentration about 0.1 to 3 weight percent which is much higher than the critical micellar aggregation concentration and the size of the micelles which pro get produced from the surfactants it is about 2 to 10 nanometer and in each micelle we have about 50 to 150 number of surfactants which we call aggregation number. And typical anionic surfactants are used which are like salt or fatty acids, uh, sulfates or sulfonates. There are other ingredients also added occasionally as, as requires like chain transfer agents, 
some inorganic salts and some other ingredients which are not main ingredient, but which basically helps in uh, qualify or improve the property of uh, the polymer that produced and chain transfer chain transfer agent basically helps us to control the molecular weight of the produced polymer. So, these are example of some recipe of uh, emulsion polymerization like styrene butyrene copolymer. This is just a number you do not need to remember this is just example uh, about this. So, we have this emulsifier surfactant sodium dosesine sulphate and this is the initiator potassium per sulphate which is water soluble and this dodecan thiol is the chain transfer agent in this case. And uh, this is another example of polyacrylate latex where again we have uh, in this case we have a divinyl benzene which is a cross linker. So, basically the resulting polymer particles will be cross linked and we have this dispersion or surfactant and this is the water soluble initiator. Now, before we go to the mechanism of uh, emulsion polymerization, just briefly uh, revisit or remind you what is surfactant micelle. Surfactants are surface active agents which consist of a both hydrophilic and hydrophobic part. In this cartoon, this uh, sphere which is the head group are generally represented as the hydrophilic group and this tail is long tail long chain tail is the hydrophobic group. So, when you add these surfactants they basically get soluble in water medium to some extent and because of their surface active they move into surface and they actually arrange such way that the hydrophobic tail part is in the air phase and the hydrophilic head is touching the surface of aqueous phase. Now, as we increase the concentration of surfactant in aqueous medium more and more surfactant goes to the surface as a result the surface tension comes down because more and more water molecules are replaced by surfactant molecule. And after some time when there is no space in the interface or the surface basically they actually arrange such a way that the hydrophobic tails are inside away from water molecules and the hydrophilic heads are outside uh, this spherical droplets in contact with water molecule. And this could be these head groups could be charged as we have seen from dodecyl sulphate molecule sodium dodecyl if they are charged they could be counter and associated with this as well, but I am not discussing those aspect in detail in this case. But as you can see that after some time these uh, surfactant molecules as we add more and more surfactant molecules they form uh, spherical micelle and the concentration at which this happens we call critical micellar concentration. So, if we increase the surface 10 concentration more and more micelles gets generated without changing the surface tension value. And the good part is that these micelles can, can actually absorb, absorb or dissolve considerable quantities of water insoluble substances because the inside is hydrophobic in nature. So, basically it can dissolve the hydrophobic molecules. So, at start of the emulsion polymerization the, the situation looks like this. Please uh, pay your attention in this uh, figure was this is the base of emulsion polymerization. So, we have surfactants added. Now, surfactants some surfactants are present as monomeric molecules. Some would be of course, in the surface which we have not shown here and some will be present as micelles. Now, we have this water insoluble monomers there will be of course, slight solubility. So, we have shown this soluble monomers in this aqueous phase by this letter m, but some of the monomers will get dissolved in the hydrophobic container basically hydrophobic core of the micelles and as a result the micelle will basically swell little bit because 
without absence of this dissolved monomer they probably has a would have, have a smaller size, but because this monomers are dissolved they are now actually of little higher size so the micelles are little swollen. There are initiator molecules which are I shown as I which are basically soluble in water and a large amount of monomer molecules are present at large droplet of size 1 to 100 microns which are stabilized by this adsorption of by these surfactant molecules. Now, this is just representative uh, scheme we are not showing the, the entire, uh, entire how many numbers of uh, monomer droplet how many number of monomer micelles are present, but these are the ingredients. So, at beginning of the emulsion polymerization we have large monomer droplets which are stabilized by surfactant adsorbed by the adsorption of surfactant molecules size is typical 1 to 10 uh, 1 to 100 micron. We have micelles which are which basically dissolve solen micelle by the, in which the monomers are dissolved in the core hydrophobic core and we have some surfactant molecules we have some monomer dissolved in aqueous medium as well as the initial molecule initiator molecules are soluble in water. Also you must note that these are not static structure the micelles are not static structure they are in equilibrium with the surfactant monomeric surfactant even the monomers which are dissolved in this uh, micelle they are in equilibrium with the monomer present in the sol soluble. So as this the monomer droplets the monomers are in equilibrium with the monomer present in the aqueous medium. So, in whenever there is a shortfall of any of this like if there is a shortfall of monomers in this uh, micellar core then this monomer can go in to replace that monomer or if there is a shortfall of monomer in aqueous solution then these droplets can supply monomer to the aqueous medium. So, this is the aqueous phase large droplet of monomers maintained in suspension by adsorbed surfactant molecules and agitation which these mo large monomer droplets which are basically more than 95 percent by weight and small monomer solen micelles which are far greater in number than the monomer droplets but contains relatively small amount of total monomer. This is important monomer droplets number or concentration is like this 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the 14 liter inverse. So, per liter we have this many monomer droplets, but look at the number of micelles or mice monomer solid micelle they are about much higher about 10 to the power 8 orders of magnitude 7 orders of magnitude more than the number of monomer droplets. So, effectively because the number of micelles are much much higher compared to monomer doublets the total surface area of micelles much more than the magnitude of the total surface area of this monomer doublets which is actually about two orders of magnitude higher the surface area of this micellar particles are much more about two order of magnitude more than the surface area of these particles. So, basically if we produce something here there is a chance of colliding with this is much more than colliding with this uh, droplets. So, with this uh, what I will do I will stop here for this lecture and then I will talk about how the reaction uh, what happens after the reaction start in this uh, emulsion polymerization.